Hey folks, I wanted to record a quick video uh, for you guys today because I wanted to emphasize the importance of three very important principles that students need to learn as they're taking forensic science courses if they plan on working in the field. And those are uh, concepts or skills uh, involving uh, critical thinking, uh, problem solving, and research. Uh, all three of those things are really important in forensics. And it's important as students that you develop those skills. Uh, the reason for me recording this video actually happened because I had a conversation with my daughter this last week. My, my youngest daughter is actually taking one of the forensic science courses here at Phoenix College from one of my colleagues. She's actually enrolled in the FOR 105 class. And this last week she was working on the measurements in the metric system lab like many of you were. And as she got, uh, as she was working through the lab, uh, she came to realize that she was going to need a, a scale, a balance of some sort to be able to measure herself and then a gallon of liquid, a gallon of milk in this case. Um, but we didn't have a bathroom scale at home and so she wasn't sure what to do. Uh, she wasn't sure how to, to solve this problem that she was facing and so she came up to me and she said, hey dad, I don't have a bathroom scale, what should I do? And instead of just giving her the answer or telling her exactly what she should do, we, we sat down for a moment and I asked her, well, what do you think you should do? Uh, what are some solutions to this problem that you're facing? If we don't have a bathroom scale, how can you go about uh, weighing yourself or weighing these things that you need to weigh. And so I asked her to think about this for a moment and come back with me with a couple of solutions. And so she thought about it and she came back and she said, well, I think a, a couple of things I could do. Um, she had mentioned that she could, uh, you know, send out a message on Facebook and ask friends or family members if they had a scale that she could borrow, which is a, a great solution. Uh, she indicated that she, that there was a scale uh, at the gym where we go and work out. And so she said she could take um, her liquid with her to the gym and she could use the gymnasium that's free of charge to use that's in the locker room at the gym, which is also a great solution. Um, she even mentioned that, uh, you know, we could go to one of the local thrift stores like a Goodwill and purchase a used scale for just a couple dollars that would also be, even though it does have a little bit of cost associated, it's, it's still cost effective in terms of solution. And so I was proud of her as she came up with solutions to the problem that she was facing. And that's a big part of what we do in forensic sciences. We have problems that we face, we have questions we need to answer, and then we have to come up with solutions to be able to answer those questions. You know, that's what science is all about. Science is about making an observation, formulating a question, developing a hypothesis, and then designing an experiment to answer the question. It involves some critical thinking, um, evaluating. Uh, let me give you an example, a forensic example. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but here in Arizona, uh, way back in the 1990s, uh, the very first case to ever use plant DNA happened here in Arizona. Uh, a man who had solicited the services of a, a prostitute had then taken that, that prostitute out into a secluded area here in Arizona uh, where he had uh, raped and murdered her. Um, at the scene of the crime, uh, when he, where he dropped her body, he ended up backing his truck into a Palo Verde tree uh, and when he backed his truck into the Palo Verde tree, it, it damaged the tree, but also a seed pod from that Palo Verde tree dropped into the back of his truck. Uh, later on, uh, when he was identified as a suspect, uh, his truck was searched, and that seed pod was found in the back of his truck. Uh, the investigators at the scene, because they did a good evaluation of the scene, noticed that there was some damage to a Palo Verde tree near the body, and they realized that that seed pod found in the back of his truck might actually be from that tree, um, and so they thought, well, what can we do with this? Uh, and so they did some research. And they found out that, you know, plants have DNA just like humans have DNA. And then maybe it might be possible to identify the exact tree that that plant seed came from. And so they approached a, a botanist at Arizona State University who did some analysis on the DNA of the seed pod and the DNA of the trees in that region and was able to, with a reasonable degree of certainty, identify the exact tree where that seed pod came from that was found in the back of his truck. And that tree, of course, was the one that was hit and damaged near the body of the crime scene. And so the forensic examiners and, and the detectives in the case, they had to think critically. They had to identify a problem. They had to come up with a solution. Uh, they had to conduct some experiments. They had to do some research. So research is also a big part of what we do in forensic science. Uh, this semester, as you work on your labs, uh, almost every lab has pre-lab questions where you have to think about what you're going to be doing before you do the lab. The, the purpose of these pre-lab questions is to, to get you thinking about what you're going to learn about as you do this lab. 
Uh, many of the answers to those pre-lab questions are going to be found in the background information at the beginning of the lab. Sometimes the information needed to answer those pre-lab questions is going to be found in the reading of your textbook, or there might be videos that I ask you to watch. But occasionally, some of the pre-lab questions will require you to find those answers out through doing some research. It may be as simple as Googling something, which is a resource you have available to you. Uh, it may require you to, to, you know, to look at outside sources like journal articles or books, but research. Research is a big part of what we do in forensic science. And so understand that if you can't find the answer easily, sometimes you may need to do some research to find that answer. That's a big part of what we do in forensic science. So again, in forensic science, three skills that you really need to learn, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to, to start to develop those skills as you're doing things like answering your pre-lab questions and working on your labs is again to think critically to when you face a problem that someone's not just going to hand you the answer but sometimes you need to be a problem solver to come up with solutions and then also sometimes it requires you to do some research you might need to do some googling try to find things on YouTube you know there are a lot of resources nowadays today nowadays with your you know your cell phone you have this 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 massive amount of information at your fingertips that if you do the correct searches for, you're going to find good information. So anyway, critical thinking, problem solving, research. These are important parts of forensic science, and I really wanted to emphasize, emphasize those with you here in this video.